how to do a motion lapse on the DJI Ronin S. So the DJI Ronin S is commonly used for stabilizing shaky footage. I've been using it for the past six months and I am pleasantly surprised with how much production value it has added to my videos. But what about time lapses and motion lapses? Last week, I went out to test the motion lapse and time lapse feature on the Ronin S and I was pleasantly surprised by the results I got. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and capture a motion time lapse and how to edit it in Adobe After Effects. Let's get started. Okay, first things first, you gotta put the camera on the gimbal and balance the two. Now we'll adjust the camera settings. Be sure to use a slow shutter speed for a wispy effect and manual focus when focusing the lens. Now go ahead and plug in the appropriate cable from your Ronin S to your camera. It's either going to be USB or USB-C. Now connect to the Ronin S with the Ronin app. Okay, so once you have the app open, go ahead and click on Create and then click on motion lapse. Okay, so you'll notice in motion lapse, there's two different points. There's point one, and that'll take us where the time lapse is going to start. And then there's two, which will take us where the time lapse is going to end. So let's go ahead and adjust point one. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on this little joystick in the bottom right corner here. Let's go ahead and move it this way. And you'll notice how this graph down below will change accordingly. Okay, and let's go ahead and adjust point two. I'm going to have it start over here. Okay, now another thing I can do too is I can adjust the tilt. So we'll just slightly adjust the tilt. Okay, so that's where it'll start, and that's where it will end. Okay, so I'm going to click on that bottom right joystick button again to go back to our regular settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust the interval, the content duration, and the frame rate. The interval means how many seconds are in between each video. So let's go ahead and set it to five seconds. So that means every five seconds, it's going to take a photo. Now content duration, this is how long we want the final video to be once all the photos are stitched together. Let's set that to 10 seconds. This is what we need to set our frame rate to when we get into Adobe After Effects. Let's go ahead and keep that at 24. You'll notice down below that it says we need to take 240s total and the capture time will take 20 minutes. To start, I'm going to press the snapshot button in the bottom middle, and then it will start taking the photos in sequence. After 20 minutes, the time lapse should be done, and then you can upload the photos to your computer. Okay, let's jump on over to Adobe After Effects. Okay, so to start out, I'm gonna double click on my project window pane, and then I'll go ahead and click on the first image in the sequence here of images that I took on the Ronin S. And I wanna make sure that this little checkbox where it says camera raw sequence, I wanna make sure that's checked. So then it will import it as a sequence rather than as individual photos. And then I'll click import. This is the camera raw filter. This is where you can do a little bit of color correction if you want to on your clip. I've already done some color correction, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Okay, and then there's my sequence. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do is we want to tell the sequence that we want it to be at 24 frames a second. I'm gonna right click and go to interpret footage and click on main. And then right where it says assume this frame rate, we're going to assume the frame rate is 24 and then we'll click okay. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and bring our sequence down to the timeline. And when we do that, it creates a new composition. And then we'll go ahead and render out this clip to see what we've got. Again, if you used a camera that took high megapixel images, this may take a while because the resolution could be all the way up to 8K or even higher. And so, so just be patient. Okay, I love it. Okay, so that's looking really good. The gimbal is stable enough to where you don't need to apply the warp stabilizer. 
Okay, so this is a nice time lapse. However, I want to zoom in a little bit closer because once I get to here, there's a lot of road here, which takes up almost a third of the frame and there's not a whole lot going on in this part of the frame. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And if I want to zoom in or add any animations to the position or the scale, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over and click on my piece here. And then I'm going to right click and click on pre-compose, click okay. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and click S for scale, and then hold the shift key and then click P for position. So that way our keyframe for our position or our scale will come up. Now keep in mind, this is a 36 megapixel image, which is the equivalency of about 8K. And my final render for this video is going to be 1080. Now some of you may be doing 4K, so that means you can zoom in about 200% before you start to lose quality if you're going with 4K. Or if you're going with HD, you can zoom in four times as much before you start losing quality. So just some numbers to keep in mind as you're working with this. But I'll go ahead and add a keyframe on scale and then a keyframe on position. And then I'm going to adjust the Y axis. And we'll go ahead and bring it down. Okay, so then once I have my keyframe set, I'm gonna to come to the beginning and then I'm gonna change my scale to be 100%. And then we'll go ahead and move our position back up. to be about where it was originally at. Maybe zoom just a tad. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Okay, so that's a nice little zoom in there. Now you notice when it gets to the keyframe, it does kind of jerk abruptly. We wanna make sure that the animation is going to gradually come to a halt. So I'm gonna right click on these keyframes here, go to keyframe assistant and click on easy ease in. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's much better, much more smooth than before. To export the video, I'm gonna go up to composition and then I'm going to click on add to render queue. And I'm gonna come down to where my timeline was and I'm gonna click on lossless. And then for format, I'm going to choose QuickTime. And for format options, I'm gonna make sure that it's on Apple ProRes 422. And then I'll click okay. And then for resolution, I'm gonna click resize 8K is a little big for me, so I'm going to go ahead and set it to UHD 4K at 23.976. And then I'll click OK. Okay, so now we want to say where we want to output it to. So let's go ahead and output it here. We'll just call it motion lapse. And then we'll save it. And then we'll go ahead and click render. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell button. Thanks for watching.